Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and this morning I'm looking at a book which is Dissenting Judgments in the Law. It's edited by Neil Geesh and Christopher Monahan, and it's published by Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. And it's an important book, I think, for students, as well as for the wider legal community. Now, my wife and I have given it the title, When the Judges Show a Bit of Bottle which is what this is about, really, because dissenting judgments are often a bit confusing to certain law students, because when they dissent, quite often the dissenting judgment of the past becomes the model rule of law for the future, which is what we've got in the book itself. This is actually the book, grey sort of cover, the spine, and some detail on the back. There's a foreword by Lord Nichols of Birkenhead, which is very well worth reading, because it puts in its perspective what we're actually uh, looking at here. There is no index, you'll see there's no index, but what you've got are um, a whole series of cases. That's the case of Regina versus Brown, for instance. And what you've got at the beginning um, is a very useful preface. The actual forward, as I say, is there by Lord Nichols. And then you go straight into the various cases. There's a lot of case law referred to. And what you've got are specific cases mentioned, many of which you will probably know. So I'm not going to go into to too much detail about the cases themselves. This is what we say. Yes, the usual suspects are all here. Whilst Lord Nichols uh, calls the book highly stimulating, when dissenting judgments always attract special rather than passing interest, the book's greatest value for the advocate lies with the impact of the dissenting uh, judgment itself, as it was at the time it was delivered, and then how we would assess the value of the judgment today, because of changing judicial values and changing values in society, for instance. Many advocates would probably agree that the dissenting judgment of yesterday is probably going to be the good law of today, as jurisprudential development takes account of changing modern opinions and so, uh, societal conditions. Uh, the editors, um, Neil Gleach and Christopher Monaghan, have taken a modern look at 19 leading cases where there have been strong dissenting judgments, and not surprisingly, they've agreed with the dissent. Nichols takes the line that the purpose of the book gives a second wind, as he calls it, to those, uh, these acts of dissent, in the hope that appropriate law reforms will result. He has a good precedent with uh, Harrington, which uh, ultimately, of course, led to the Occupiers' Liability Act of 1984. We were particularly pleased to support what Nichols says, that many of our great modern judges are on the dissentient judges' list. And rightly, quote, a place is found for Lord Denning. Frankly, the book would lack some weight without Lord Denning's contribution, but it's a highly thought-provoking book, which will reach out to the law student, the practitioner and the jurisprudent for the, ex uh, the excellence of the controversies which are set out in six parts. The final few sentences of the preface sum up the book brilliantly, where they say that the common law depends on the judiciary being able to offer their own opinion, which even if forming part of the majority or the dissent, could differ from their fellow judges. And they go on to say that the survival of the opportunity to articulate the reasoning for dissent would mean the survival of a long-standing and proud record English legal history and the tradition throughout the history more generally. Um, and of course that's very important. And that's it. That's what makes this book such an important book. And I'd like to thank everybody for contributing to it. That's a dissent... Uh, judgments themselves and the people who've compiled it and of course uh, Wildy Hill and Simmons for publishing it. Thank you. Bye-bye.